Okay, so thank you to the organizer uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk. And I think I don't need any introduction, especially uh, after you've seen a picture of me 20 years ago. I still have the finger. Okay, so I will talk about uh, uh, the effects of, uh, um, sorry, the implication of uh, gravitational waves uh, on uh, energy and modified gravity in cosmology. And uh, uh, just uh, let me give you a brief uh, uh, motivation. As you know, uh, 20 years ago we discovered that uh, uh, the expansion of the universe is accelerating, meaning that uh, the, the average distance between a galaxy uh, that is described by, by the scale factor A uh, has a, 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 a double time derivative, uh, which is uh, positive. And in order to, 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 to have that, uh, if you assume that uh, um, Einstein's equations describe uh, this uh, cosmological evolution, we have to require that the universe is filled by, by some uh, uh, matter with the negative pressure that you call the dark energy. And there are a lot of uh, hints uh, that, uh, um, that dark energy makes up uh, about two-thirds of uh, uh, the total budget of uh, the energy density of the universe. Um, so, we know that the general relativity, uh, this has triggered a lot of uh, um, uh, work in, in order to uh, test the general relativity uh, on cosmological scales. And in particular, we know that, uh, uh, we know very well that the general relativity has been very well tested on solar system scales or, or on cosmological scales. But on, on larger scales, on, uh, on the order of uh, uh, the, Hubble, uh, the Hubble radius or, uh, or smaller, um, the constraints are much uh, weaker. And uh, just to give you an idea, if when we think about the modifications of, uh, of, uh, from general relativity, uh, we have in mind uh, some additional degrees of freedom, like uh, a light scalar field. Uh, and in general, this uh, light scalar field uh, acts, uh, uh, negates the field uh, force that can be recognized, for instance, as a, a modification of uh, uh, the observed uh, G Newton, uh, gravitational constant, or it can give you an anomalous light uh, bending that can be seen as a, as a difference uh, between uh, the, um, the time time gravitational potential and the space space uh, uh, gravitational potential. So we know that on a solar system case, uh, these uh, two parameters, uh, mu and, uh, and sigma, are very tightly constrained and uh, depend depending on the scales, they, they are of, uh, smaller uh, than. Uh, about 10 to the minus 5, while uh, on a cosmological scale, these constraints are uh, much weaker, of the order of 10 to the minus, minus 1. And uh, we luckily will live in a, in a very, um, in an epoch which is uh, rich of, uh, of data, and we know that this data will uh, improve uh, even more with the next uh, generation of uh, uh, last accessory surveys, which uh, will collect a lot of uh, um, information about the position and shape of galaxies which will allow to measure these uh, parameters, uh, uh, increasing these constraints by one or, or two orders of magnitude. And just to, to give you an idea, here I, I am plotting uh, um, the growth of rate of structure in the universe as a function of uh, the redshift. This black line is uh, the growth of rate uh, in a lambda CDM, which is uh, the, the standard cosmological model uh, at the moment. Um, assuming uh, uh, cosmological parameters measured by, by the Planck uh, satellite. And these uh, uh, data with their error bars are uh, the measurements uh, um, by galaxy source, by current galaxy source. And as you can see, these are quite, uh, well, they are not uh, very, very strong. They are compatible with the, uh, with the, the Lambda CDM model measured by Planck. But in the future, for instance, with the Euclid, which we launched in 2021, we expect something like that. Eh? So we expect to be able to distinguish between a different uh, growth rate uh, predicted by different models, uh, for instance, of uh, dark energy and, and modified gravity. Now, this was the picture until uh, two years ago. So uh, we, we were um, uh, relying on, on, uh, on this uh, kind of service to test the gravity on cosmological scales. But actually, um, I claim that the situation radically changed uh, since a couple of years with the arrival of uh, gravitational wave physics. And I'm going to explain why. So basically, um, modifications of gravity introduce some, uh, not always, but uh, uh, very often, um, 
are associated to, uh, to breaking of, of Lorentz invariance, uh, which uh, um, basically acts as a, as a medium. Okay. So in the same way as you can uh, use light uh, to study a, a material um, by just uh, seeing uh, uh, how it is modified by this material, now we can try to use the gravitational waves to, to measure the material uh, in our universe, so to measure modifications of, of gravity. And uh, this can be done, of, for instance, as uh, in this picture, by observing at the same time gravitational waves and, and photons, or just by, by observing gravitational waves and looking at distortion in, the, in their uh, waveform. Okay. And the reason why we can apply uh, gravitational wave physics observing a LIGO band, so on, on scales of the order of a uh, thousand of uh, kilometers, to uh, the whole cosmology is that uh, uh, in most of the time uh, the effective theories that we use uh, to describe dark energy are uh, included in, in the LIGO band. Okay? So they have a cutoff which is at least of the order of uh, what is called lambda tree, which is uh, uh, Planck mass times uh, the Hubble uh, rate squared to the one third, which is of the order of uh, inverse thousand of uh, kilometers. Now, let me uh, show you how uh, gravitational waves are changed in general by uh, modifications of uh, gravity. Uh, so this is the, the Friedman metric with the scale factor that we've seen before, but now I'm adding a, a, a spin to uh, degree of freedom, so uh, a, a space uh, a perturbation of the, of the space component of the metric, which is uh, traceless and, uh, and divergence free and, and transverse. And uh, uh, so, in general relativity, the evolution equation for, uh, for uh, these gravitational waves is this one. So it's basically uh, the evolution equation for, uh, for a wave uh, um, with, uh, uh, that propagates uh, with, uh, with the speed of light, which uh, uh, I'm here assuming that uh, uh, I'm setting to, to one. And uh, in cosmology, we have, uh, we have the Hubble uh, friction. Uh, so uh, H uh, is defined as uh, A dot over A, where A uh, is uh, the scale factor. And uh, you, this acts uh, as a sort of damping to the gravitational waves, and uh, you can think of it as a sort of dilution due to the, due, due to the span, dilution of the energy density, uh, of the energy uh, density of the gravitational waves. So, um, well, first of all, uh, in uh, modified gravity, we, accept, we expect uh, two effects. Uh, uh, we can expect some sort of uh, uh, additional damping uh, that has to, to the one of the, of the upper friction. Um, and uh, uh, we expect that uh, uh, since uh, mm, the, the gravitational waves are traveling through a sort of medium that breaks uh, Lorentz invariance, uh, you expect also uh, some deviation for some, so that the speed of uh, propagation of these gravitational waves may be different from, from the speed of light. Okay? So, and nicely, uh, these two parameters also enter in the, in the parameters that I showed you before, mu and sigma, that uh, uh, were supposed to be te tested with the uh, last structure of service. So, somehow we, we are able to uh, constrain these parameters uh, before these uh, last structure of service are, are even large. So, let me go through uh, quickly uh, these parameters. So, first of all, this uh, dumping here, uh, in order to uh, measure it. Um, it's actually it's actually difficult because you need to know uh, the intrinsic luminosity in the uh, electromagnetic and in the gravitational waves for uh, for uh, for a given source. So the constraints that uh, we will have in the future are, are the loose. This is, for instance, for uh, for Lisa. And uh, in the in this talk, I will more focus on uh, on this parameter here, which is the speed of. Uh, of uh, propagation of gravitons, and uh, um, I think uh, Stas mentioned before that, um, um, as you know, on the, um, on the 17th of August uh, 2017, uh, LIGO and Virgo were able to uh, measure the, uh, the merging of uh, two um, binary, uh, two binary, um, binary pulsars. So uh, two, two pulsars. Uh, sorry, two neutral stars. Uh, and uh, at the same time, sorry, two seconds, uh, uh, just two seconds later, um, Fermi was able to measure a burst of uh, gamma rays, and uh, from uh, the almost uh, simultaneous uh, 
uh, arrival of these two events that were emitted 100 million million years ago, uh, one is able to put a constraint on, uh, on the speed of propagation, which is, uh, must be less than 10 to the uh, close to 1 and by 10 to the minus uh, 15. Another, um, another possible effect uh, in the gravitational wave propagation is uh, uh, well, uh, something that I believe uh, it's a new effect. Uh, which is the decay of uh, gravitons into, into dark energy fluctuations, uh, which uh, in fact is, uh, is possible if uh, kinematics are allowed, as I will show you. And uh, if you have some decay, uh, you associated to, the, to this by, by the optical theorem, you should have also some, uh, some uh, modification of the dispersion relation, which I hear not as, uh, as uh, f of k. And uh, these effects are much easier to measure than these two effects because they do not require to know the, to, to have an electromagnetic counterpart at the source. Because uh, since they are frequency dependent, you can measure difference in between, uh, uh, between different frequencies. And for instance, if I um, give you, uh, just to give you an order of magnitude of, uh, of uh, the limits that you can put on, on these uh, two parameters, now, if I consider the dimensional parameters here, I have to take the decay rate divided by the typical frequency of the gravitational waves, and for the modification in the dispersion relation, I have to I have to compare f to uh, to the frequency squared of the gravitational waves, and these are um, and these are uh, measured up to uh, something which is of the order of of the frequency of the gravitational waves di divided by the distance of the source, uh, which is a very small uh, number, order of 10 to the minus 80. Here I'm not discussing a mass for the graviton, uh, just because I will consider models that do not uh, uh, that, uh, leave uh, the, the graviton massless. But if you apply these, uh, these uh, numbers here, you will find exactly the constraints that, uh, that have been found on, uh, on the graviton mass. Okay, so in the, in the rest of the talk, I will go through um, um, some models of, uh, uh, of modified gravity, and uh, I will show you why they lead to, to this modification in the, in, the, in the propagation of the gravitational waves, and I will show you the consequences of uh, uh, not seeing uh, this effect in the, in the gravitational waves. Okay, okay so the, the simplest way of uh, modifying gravity, or of going beyond the general relativity is to assume that uh, there is a, a light scalar field. So, the, 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 so if, uh, if uh, this light scalar field is absent, uh, this is zero, and this is, uh, this is just a constant, so I have general relativity plus a cosmological constant, which is uh, exactly lambda CDM, so the standard model. I can add a scalar field to that, uh, this is usually called in, in, in cosmology quintessence, a fancy name, but it doesn't matter. And uh, uh, this is uh, just to say that uh, uh, you are basically replacing the cosmological constant by some sort of uh, time-dependent uh, cosmological constant. So you will, uh, you will see the effect in the, in the, on the, on the right-hand side of the Einstein's equation as, uh, as, a new, as a new component. Um, So another possibility is to uh, complicate it a little bit the, 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 the Lagrangian of, of the scalar field. So now the, the scalar field can depend generically on n phi, but also on x, where x is, uh, is uh, made up of uh, the first derivative of, uh, of the scalar field by, by this quantity. And this is called, uh, with another fancy name, uh, k essence. And uh, the difference with the, with the quintessence is that now the scalar field can have uh, uh, fluctuations that can uh, cluster, for instance, those most case, and in general, it's, uh, this perturbation will not travel with the, with the speed of uh, light, but can, can travel with a different speed that I denote, denote as a CS, okay, that I will use also later. And now let me complicate uh, things a bit. Uh, you can imagine that uh, the scalar field is directly coupled to, to the 4 h scalar, and in this case, uh, um, well, in this case, I, I, I have a kinetic mixing between the scalar field and, and the gravity, uh, which I can interpret as a, as a genuine modification of, uh, of gravity. And uh, you can try to explain uh, the acceleration that you, that you observe as really a modification of, uh, of the left-hand side of the Einstein's equation rather than uh, 
modification in the, in the right hand side. And this is sometimes called the self acceleration. Uh, when you have uh, this uh, uh, mixing with the uh, gravity, um, you, so we are introducing a, a, a basically a, a light scale field be because we want, we want to modify gravity on a large case. And uh, this light scale field mixes or, or is coupled to universally to all matter. So, as I said at the beginning, it introduces an extra force which is, uh, which is extractive that we don't see, at least not solar since the case, and then and, and, and an anonymous light bending. So, uh, in order to uh, bypass uh, the fact that we do not see uh, these uh, effects on a short case, uh, people have, uh, um, have, event, have uh, uh, developed uh, uh, screening mechanisms, and I'm going to describe uh, what is called Vance screening, which relies on the presence of uh, higher derivative operators, like this one. So, you introduce something uh, that is proportional to box. Uh, to the Lambertian of, uh, of the scalar field here in the Lagrangian. And now uh, the box on the Lambertian will become uh, uh, large, large in particular of uh, um, uh, larger than lambda 3 uh, to the cube by some mass parameter uh, to the cube that I, I already introduced uh, before in a region where uh, you have over density. So basically, this box phi is sourced by this region, like uh, you get because it's coupled to, to matter. And uh, in, uh, in this region, uh, like for instance in the, in the solar system, uh, the presence of uh, this large uh, box phi increases the kinetic uh, uh, energy of, uh, of uh, the scalar field and uh, at the same time suppresses uh, the coupling to, to, to gravity. So basically the situation is that you can recover GR on, on this case and uh, by, by leaving modifications of gravity uh, of uh, Possibly larger on on, uh, on uh, larger scales on, on cosmological scales. Uh, by doing that, uh, you also introduce uh, some uh, sort of uh, cutoff scale because uh, um, uh, below lambda three uh, you enter in a strong coupling regime, uh, uh, where uh, quantum correction will start being uh, being important. Now, uh, so this is the, the sort of uh, uh, simplest model in, in the story. Uh, the question is, is this the end of the story? Can we, can we go over, uh, can we go beyond this, uh, uh, the, simpler, the simplest uh, model? Well, of course the answer is uh, uh, yes, for the moment. And uh, people have started to uh, develop all, all sort of uh, uh, scalar field uh, models to, to modify gravity. And uh, uh, they stopped uh, um, <coughs> when they reached uh, the most general uh, uh, scalar tensor theories with second order equations of motion. And this was found already in the, in the 70s by a uh, mathematician called Dordensky and was uh, recently rediscovered by some uh, French uh, people, for instance, like uh, Fayet. And uh, uh, so, as you can see here, this uh, very complicated Lagrangian is made up of. Uh, um, five uh, different functions, G2, G3, G, sorry, four different functions, G2, G3, G4, and, and uh, G5. And these strange uh, um, uh, combinations here are made up in such a way that although you have higher derivatives in the Lagrangian, when you write down the equations of motion, the higher derivatives uh, disappear and you are only left with the at most second derivative. And the reason why you want to stop at second derivative in the equations of motion is that uh, uh, typically uh, higher derivatives uh, are associated to uh, a higher number number of uh, scalar degrees of freedom, uh, more than one, and uh, which are associated to instabilities by Ostrogaski theory. Okay. So in general, you, you, you want to stop uh, here. However, uh, recently there has been a, um, there has been a discovery that you can go beyond uh, this uh, picture by uh, considering theories that uh, uh, that. Uh, lead to higher derivatives in the equations of motion, but are degenerate. So intrinsically, the number of the equations of freedom is, uh, uh, is, the, is the same, so it's the only one scalar and, and uh, the, two, uh, the, the two standard uh, uh, two-spin uh, polarization of the gravitational field. And uh, the, the prototypical model of, uh, of these uh, degenerate theories are these uh, beyond or density theories that are given by adding to this Lagrangian uh, this, uh, this combination, so don't, don't uh, uh, 
uh, you don't need to enter into the details, but it is just uh, uh, adding one uh, one more uh, function to this uh, Lagrange because these two f four and five uh, functions are related uh, be between each other by these degeneracy conditions. And now uh, this uh, uh, this theory is considered as a sort of a benchmark theory, that the most general uh, scalar tensor theories that you can uh, cook up. Uh, that can be devoid of instability, and uh, we can try to test this theory in, uh, in, uh, with observations. So let's see how the, the gravitational waves are affected in this, uh, in this uh, complicated theory. And the origin of uh, any particular, let's try to see what, uh, uh, what is the effect on the speed of propagation of, uh, of the gravitational waves. And so, the, first of all, you see that uh, in, um, when you have two derivatives on, uh, on acting, two, two uh, covariant derivatives acting on the scalar field, these covariant derivatives contain um, a Christopher symbol. And uh, uh, since the scalar field is supposed to act as a, as a the canary, so it's uh, supposed to uh, make the universe uh, uh, expanding, accelerating. Uh, the scalar field has, uh, has a time component, so you can take uh, uh, this Christophen with a uh, with zero upper symbol, symbol and uh, uh, IJ uh, lower symbols uh, times phi dot, which is the, the, the homogeneous time component of, of the scalar field. And, uh, and this Christophen here contains uh, the time component of, uh, of the spatial metric, which contains the gravitational waves. So basically, here you are uh, you are introducing a gamma ij dot squared, which is a, a time kinetic uh, term of, uh, of the gravitational waves, while the, the spatial kinetic terms is, is contained only in the in the Fourier scale. And in doing that, you are the tuning the the time kinetic energy and the spatial kinetic energy, and therefore changing the speed of uh, propagation. Okay. So now the speed of propagation can be different from one, and in fact. Uh, the difference with the, with, the, with the speed of light is given by this combination, and uh, not unexpectedly, you, you find uh, this, uh, uh, this tail here, because uh, this is what changes the gravitational waves, and, uh, and so on. And as I said at the beginning, this uh, parameter was supposed to be constrained in the last structure um, at, at, at this level, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2. But now we know that it's constrained at, at the order of 10 to the minus 15 in the gravitational waves. So let's see what, uh, what uh, uh, if we want to set this uh, quantity to zero, basically what happens. Well, we want to do it in a, a sort of background independent way. So we want to do it irrespectively of, uh, uh, so for any, phi, for any two derivatives of phi, one derivative of phi, and for any Hubble value of the Hubble parameter, so in this case, we must set uh, this function and uh, this function automatically to zero, which basically eliminates uh, all, uh, uh, sorry, uh, well, before I must say, so you are left with, uh, with this term, and this term, and this one. But now, uh, if, if you set uh, this, uh, this G5 of X to zero, it means that uh, G5 cannot depend on X, and uh, if G5 cannot depend on X, one can show that uh, this quantity here can be rewritten as G4, so it can be just absorbed into G4. So I basically can, uh, uh, can eliminate uh, all this part of, uh, of the Lagrangian. Okay. Uh, so this is the most uh, general uh, theory compatible with, uh, with uh, the fact that the speed of, uh, propag of propagation of gravitons is uh, the one of light. So we have G5 and F5 equal to zero. And uh, uh, yes, and, and this function must be equal and opposite uh, to this one in order to have a CT square equal to, to, to 1. So we are left with this, uh, and uh, in order to uh, try to see, uh, and we would like to constrain uh, also the, the, this part of, uh, of uh, the Lagrangian. So in order to do that, to, to easy the task, let us introduce this parameter, which is just uh, uh, given by g4 of x divided by, by x. And, uh, um, and uh, this is, uh, is related to f4. So now I can take this, uh, uh, this Lagrangian and expand it in, uh, in perturbation, in particular in dark energy perturbation and in gravitational uh, wave perturbation. And what I find, uh, 
is that uh, there are couplings of this type. Uh, so there are cubic couplings uh, that uh, involve uh, the gravitational waves, two, two time derivatives of the gravitational waves, and uh, uh, a special derivative of, uh, of the fluctuations of the scalar field, which are here denoted by, by pi, and, and, uh, and uh, another uh, special derivative of, uh, of pi. So I have a coupling gamma pi pi, and uh, in front of this coupling we have uh, 1 over lambda 3 cube, lambda 3 was uh, the parameter that I that I introduced before, which is of the order of inverse thousands of kilometers, so it is in the LIGO band, and then this parameter alpha h, okay, the one that I, that parameterizes these two terms in the, in the Lagrange. Uh, so now I can uh, uh, look whether, thanks, thanks to this, uh, to this coupling, uh, gravitational waves can decay into pi pi, into fluctuations of, uh, of the scalar field, and uh, so, first of all, uh, uh, we can study the case where the speed of fluctuations of, uh, of uh, the, the, this uh, dark energy field are larger than one, and in this case, uh, one can uh, easily see that uh, the decay is kinematically forbidden. Uh, then let's suppose that, uh, let's take the case where the speed of uh, fluctuations of, uh, of dark energy is exactly the speed of light, and in this case, you can see that uh, although um, the kinematic, although you can conserve energy and momentum, you cannot conserve angular momentum uh, because in this case, uh, as you probably know, mm, a massless particle can only uh, decay into, uh, sorry, two, uh, massive, <laughs> massless particle decaying in massive particle can only uh, decay collinearly and in this case a spin 2 field cannot uh, conserve angular momentum if it decays uh, collinearly. And you can easily see by the fact that, uh, uh, in this case, this operator is really, is really zero. Uh, for CS uh, less than one, so for uh, speed of fluctuations of the scalar field less than the speed of light, you have a, a decay which is allowed. Okay. So in this case, you can compute the decay rate. And this, of course, uh, uh, given by the square of, of, uh, of this number here. And then there are some uh, kinematic factor. And uh, uh, it's proportional to the, to the frequency of the gravitational waves to the power of 7. And now, since we are taking uh, uh, this gravitational waves frequency at the LIGO band, which is of the order of lambda 3, you basically have that uh, the decay rate is uh, huge. Okay. Huge compared to, uh, to what we see, uh, because we don't see any effect of this decay of the gravitational waves. So in this case, you can comfortably set uh, this parameter alpha h to 0. Okay, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you have this decay, you, uh, you should also have uh, some uh, effects in the dispersion relation. And this is easy to see because if you have this uh, uh, cubic vertex, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, make up a loop by it. And uh, you can uh, study the modification in the dispersion relation, or at least the, the calculable part, the local part, which, is, uh, which gives you a, a logarithmic uh, uh, dependence. And uh, you can uh, check that uh, uh, by the optical theorem, this is uh, related to, to the decay, uh, of course. And uh, this happens when, uh, so uh, as you can see, um, when uh, CS squared is less than the speed of light, uh, the argument of the logarithm is negative, so it means that the logarithm contains uh, an imaginary part, and, uh, and, uh, and then you can use the optical theorem. But in general, when uh, the speed of uh, um, Fluctuation, the scalar fluctuations is larger than one, and in this case uh, the, the argument is uh, positive. The logarithm is always uh, real, and uh, you don't have a, uh, you don't have a decay as uh, as expected from uh, kinematical considerations. So I can go back to my uh, my previous my original slide, and uh, and now we have studied how uh, how the presence of this uh, alpha h can uh, can affect the the so the propagation of, of gravitational waves. And uh, this alpha h is also a parameter that, uh, that uh, is contained in, in, in the modifications of gravity that we were expecting to measure with last status stories. So you can also set these parameters to zero by and kill another, uh, another part, part of the parameter space. If I go back to my covariant Lagrange, so we said that uh, basically we are setting to zero this alpha h and we are eliminating also this part of, of the Lagrangian. Okay. 
okay? And at the end, uh, uh, this, uh, this function here can only depend on the scale field uh, value. So if you remember at the beginning, I showed you this plot, uh, this, uh, sorry, this slide, and, uh, and I asked you, is this the end of the story? Well, now you know that uh, yes, it is the end of the story, basically because gravitational wave propagation uh, don't allow you to have uh, this, uh, compl this complicated uh, uh, Lagrangians here. Uh, so just a summary uh, before concluding. We have seen that uh, if, uh, if the gravitation, if um, uh, the scalar fluctuations of uh, dark energy are less than the speed of light, uh, there is a decay, decay of gravitational waves uh, is allowed kinematically, and this is related to the imaginary part of, uh, of the calculable uh, quantum correction of the dispersion relation. If CS uh, is larger than one, there is no decay, but, but the real part of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the calculable quantum correction of the dispersion relation is there, and so it allows you to, uh, to rule out uh, this, uh, this possibility. For CS equal to one, actually, um, there is no, there is no uh, calculable quantum correction because uh, this uh, uh, goes to zero, but there are other quantum corrections that uh, appear at lambda three, uh, which are related to the UV completion. In general, they are not uh, calculable, but you expect that also uh, those, the loss of this uh, will rule out uh, possibility of having uh, a high order of operators. So in general you are left with, uh, with, this, uh, with this Lagrangian. Uh, in this case you can check that uh, the gravitational wave uh, decay and, uh, and uh, uh, modification in the dispersion relation are, are suppressed, okay, because they are suppressed by a parameter which is much higher than, uh, than number three. And this theory is also relatively stable. So conclusion, uh, gravitational waves uh, change uh, dramatically. There's prospect for a last such a service. Uh, they they uh, imply a use cut in, in uh, available uh, uh, parameter space. Uh, many theories are ruled out by, by the fact that you see that the gravitational waves propagate with the uh, speed of light. There are no decay in uh, gravitational waves into, into dark energy fluctuations and uh, we do not see modification uh, in the dispersion relation. So I must say that uh, these are constraints in a, in a specific uh, uh, modified gravity model that uh, uh, relies on a, scalar, a single scalar field, but there are constraints on other theories that come from gravitational waves, like for instance on a massive uh, uh, gravity or bi-gravity, and these have been studied extensively by, by Philippe here. And uh, in, the, in the future, uh, well, we studied the, the the perturbative decay of gravitational waves, we study just one graviton decaying in, in, uh, in, uh, into, into pi, into pi. Uh, but of course, uh, um, one expects that uh, this, uh, uh, this decay will be non perturbative because uh, there will be a lot of pi, pi's produced, uh, so we would like to see what happens when you consider a high rotation number. Thanks. Because uh, this uh, higher derivative, uh, um, so you see, they, they act as relevant operators. So you cannot. Uh, there will be also a higher derivative that uh, that are surprised by by lambda three, and uh, uh, this is the most general uh, uh, theory, which is devoid of uh, of instabilities of ghosts, for instance, that you can use uh, to to describe uh, uh, scalar test, to describe scalar test of gravity, basically. So yeah, one cannot uh, one cannot do more. You don't agree? Uh, well, I'm thinking that maybe you can tell you some of the Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Now, by this ghost, this ghost uh, would be would have a mass which is lower than the cutoff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not talking about ghost with uh, with a mass higher than the cutoff. I'm talking about ghost with mass lower than the cutoff because this cutoff is very low. Standard three is very low. So this is really the most general uh, scale tensor theory that I can consider. Okay, uh, let's start another question. Let's thank Filippo again. Okay.